session objectives by the end of this session you will be able to understand the basic definitions and general safety requirements list the general conditions related to supply and use of energy describe the testing operation and maintenance of electric supply lines and apparatus list the safety requirements for overhead lines underground cables and generating stations learning path this session will be divided further into four modules which will help you understand each concept better and at your own pace let us begin with the first module cea safety regulations 2010 part 1 dual objectives by the end of this module you will be able to understand the genesis and relevance of ie rules define the basic terms related to ie rules and safety regulations identify the designated persons to operate and carry out the work on electrical lines and apparatus describe the general safety requirements The IE rules has its root in section 37 of Indian Electricity Act 1910. Section 37 of the act empowers the Central Electricity Board to formulate rules to regulate generation, transmission, supply and use of electrical energy. The IE rules were formulated by Central Electricity Board, an entity constituted under section 36A of IE Act 1910 published in Official Gazette of India on 26th June 1956 Electricity Act 2003 has come into effect from 10th June 2003 IE Act 1910 has been repealed by section 185 of the act section 185 saved the rules till such time regulation under section 53 of EA 2003 are made section 53 empowers CEA to specify measures for safety and supply of electricity CEA has issued regulations for measures relating to safety and electric supply on 20th September 2010 notified in official gazette on 24th September 2010 in view of the above the ie rules attains the status of repealed rules but the cea regulations are yet to be implemented by many states because of certain difficulties in implementation before we get on with the safety requirements let's look at some important definitions relevant to our field of work act act means the electricity act 2003 ampere it is the unit of electric current and is a constant current which flowing in two parallel state conductors of infinite length of negligible cross section and placed at a distance of 1 meter apart in a vacuum will produce a force of 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 newton per meter length between the conductors bare it means not covered with insulating materials cable it is a length of insulated single conductor solid or stranded or of two or more such conductors each provided with its own insulation which are laid up together such insulated conductor or conductors may or may not be provided with an overall mechanical protective covering circuit it is an arrangement of conductor or conductors for the purpose of conveying electricity and forming a system or a branch of a system circuit breaker it is a device capable of making and breaking the circuit under all conditions and unless otherwise specified so designed as to break the current automatically under abnormal conditions conductor it is any wire cable bar tube rail or plate used for conducting electricity and so arranged as to be electrically connected to a system cut out it means 
any appliance for automatically interrupting the transmission of electricity through the conductor when the current rises above a predetermined amount and shall also include fusible cutout. Danger. It refers to danger to health or danger to life or any part of body from shock, burn or other injury to persons or property or from tire or explosion attendant upon the generation, transmission, transformation, conversion, distribution or use of electricity. Dead. It means at or about earth potential and disconnected from any life system. It is used only with reference to current carrying parts when these parts are not live. Designated person. It means a person designated under regulation 3. Earthed. Also known as connected with earth. It means connected with the general mass of earth in such manner as to ensure at all times an immediate discharge of electricity without danger. Guarded. It means covered, shielded, fenced, or otherwise protected by means of suitable casings, barrier, rails, or metal screens to remove the possibility of dangerous contact or approach by persons or objects to a point of danger. High voltage direct current HVDC. It means direct current DC voltage above 1 lakh volts used for transmission of power. Installation. It means any composite electrical unit used for the purpose of generating, transforming, transmitting, converting, distributing or utilizing electricity. Intrinsically safe. As applied to apparatus or associated circuits, it denotes that any sparking that may occur in normal working is incapable of causing explosion of inflammable gas or vapor. Linked switch. It means a switch with all the poles mechanically linked so as to operate simultaneously. Live. It means electrically charged. Neutral conductor. It means that conductor of a multi-wire system, the voltage of which is normally intermediate between the voltages of the other conductors of the system and shall also include return wire of the single phase system. Occupier. It refers to the owner or person in occupation of the premises where electricity is used or proposed to be used. Ohm. It is the unit of electrical resistance and is the electrical resistance between two points of a conductor when a constant potential difference of one volt applied to these points produces a current of 1 ampere in the conductor provided no electromotive force is generated in the conductor. Owner refers to the company or body corporate or association or body of individuals whether incorporated or not or artificial juridical person which owns or operates or maintains electrical plants and lines. Schedule It refers to the schedule to these regulations. Section. It refers to a section of the Act. Street Box. It refers to a totally enclosed structure, either above or below ground, containing apparatus for transforming, switching, controlling, or otherwise regulating electricity. Switch. It refers to a manually operated device for opening and closing or for changing the connection of a circuit. Switch Gear. It denotes switches circuit breakers, cutouts, and other apparatus used for the operation, regulation, and control of circuits. System. It is an electrical system in which all the conductors and apparatus are electrically connected to a common source of electric supply. Watt. It is the unit of active power and MW means megawatt and is equal to 10 raised to the power 6 watts. Volt. It refers to the unit of potential difference of electromotive force and is the difference of electrical potential which exists between two points of a conductor carrying a constant current of 1 ampere when the power dissipated between these points is 1 watt. Voltage. 
it denotes the difference of electric potential measured in volts between any two conductors or between any part of either conductor and the earth as measured by a volt meter meeting indian standards now that we know the basic terms associated with safety regulations let's learn about the people designated to operate on electrical lines and apparatus a supplier or a consumer or the owner agent or manager of mine or the agent of any company operating in an oil field or the owner of a drilled well in an oil field or a contractor who has entered into a contract with a supplier or a consumer to carry out duties incidental to the generation transformation transmission conversion distribution or use of electricity shall designate persons for the purpose to operate and carry out the work on electrical lines and apparatus the supplier or consumer or the owner agent or manager of a mine or the agent of any company operating in an oil field or the owner of a drilled well in an oil field or a contractor referred to on sub regulation 1 shall maintain a register wherein the names of the designated persons and the purpose for which they are engaged shall be entered no person shall be designated under sub regulation 1 unless he possesses a certificate of competency or electrical work permit issued by the appropriate government his name is entered in the register referred to in sub regulation 2 next we have the inspection of designated officers and other safety measures the register maintained under sub regulation 2 of regulation 3 shall be produced before the electrical inspector when required by him if on inspection the electrical inspector finds that the designated person does not fulfill the required qualification he shall recommend the removal of the name of such persons from the register now let's look at the general safety requirements pertaining to construction installation protection operation and maintenance of electric supply lines apparatus all electric supply lines and apparatus shall be of sufficient rating for power insulation and estimated fault current and of sufficient mechanical strength for the duty cycle which they may be required to perform under the environmental conditions of installation and shall be constructed installed protected worked and maintained in such a manner as to ensure safety of human beings animals and property save as otherwise provided in these regulations the relevant code of practice of the bureau of indian standards or national electrical code if any may be followed to carry out the purposes of this regulation and in the event of any inconsistency the provisions of these regulations shall prevail the material and apparatus used shall conform to the relevant specifications of the bureau of indian standards or international electrotechnical commission where such specifications have already been laid down all electrical equipment shall be installed above the mean sea level msl as declared by local municipal authorities and where such equipment is to be installed in the basement consumer shall ensure that the design of the basement should be such that there is no seepage or leakage or logging of water in the basement next we have general safety requirements for service lines and apparatus on consumers premises the supplier shall ensure that all electric supply lines wires fittings and apparatus belonging to him or under his control which are on a consumer's premises are in a safe condition and in all respects fit for supplying electricity and the supplier shall take precautions to avoid danger arising on such premises from such supply lines wires fittings and apparatus service lines placed by the supplier on the premises of a consumer which are underground or which are accessible shall be so insulated and protected by the supplier as to be secured under all ordinary conditions against electrical 
mechanical, chemical or other injury to the insulation. Commercial As far as circumstances permit, take precautions for the safe custody of the equipment on his premises belonging to the supplier. The consumer shall also ensure that the installation under his control is maintained in a safe condition. Now, let's learn about the general safety requirements for switch gear on consumer's premises. The supplier shall provide a suitable switch gear in each conductor of every service line other than an earthed or earthed neutral conductor or the earthed external conductor of a concentric cable within a consumer's premises in an accessible position and such switch gear shall be contained within an adequately enclosed fireproof receptacle provided that where more than one consumer is supplied through a common service line each such consumer shall be provided with an independent switch gear at the point of rigid junction to the common service every electric supply line other than the earthed or earth neutral conductor of any system or the earthed external conductor of a concentric cable shall be protected by suitable switch gear by its owner next we will learn how to identify earthed and earth neutral conductors and position of switches and switch gear therein where the conductors include an earthed conductor of a two wire system or an earthed neutral conductor of a multi wire system or a conductor which is to be connected thereto the following conditions shall be complied with an indication of a permanent nature shall be provided by the owner of the earthed or earth neutral conductor or the conductor which is to be connected thereto to enable such conductor to be distinguished from any live conductor and such indication shall be provided where the earthed or earth neutral conductor is the property of the supplier at or near the point of commencement of supply where a conductor forming part of a consumer's system is to be connected to the supplier's earthed or earthed neutral conductor at the point where such connection is to be made in all other cases at a point corresponding to the point of commencement of supply or at such other points as may be approved by an electrical inspector no cut out link or switch other than a linked switch arranged to operate simultaneously on the earthed or earth neutral conductor and life conductors shall be inserted or remain inserted in any earthed or earth neutral conductor of a two wire system or in any earthed or earth neutral conductor of a multi wire system or in any conductor connected thereto provided that the above requirement shall not apply in case of a link for testing purposes or a switch for use in controlling a generator or transformer now let's learn about the general safety requirements for earthed terminal on consumers premises the supplier shall provide and maintain on the consumers premises for the consumers use a suitable earthed terminal in an accessible position at or near the point of commencement of supply provided that in the case of installation of voltage exceeding 250 volts the consumer shall in addition to the aforementioned earthing arrangement provide his own earthing system with an independent electrode provided further that the supplier may not provide any earthed terminal in the case of installations already connected to his system on or before the date to be specified by the state government in this behalf if he is satisfied that the consumer's earthing arrangement is efficient the consumer shall take all reasonable precautions to prevent mechanical damage to the earth terminal and its lead belonging to the supplier the supplier may recover from the consumer the cost of installation on the basis of schedule of charges published by him in advance and where such schedule of charges is not published the procedure laid down in regulation 63 shall apply explanation for the purposes of sub regulation 1 the expression 
point of commencement of supply of electricity shall mean that the point at the incoming terminal of the switch gear installed by the consumer now let's learn about the general safety requirements for accessibility of bare conductors where bare conductors are used in a building the owner of such conductors shall ensure that they are inaccessible provide in readily accessible position switches for rendering them dead whenever necessary and take such other safety measures as are specified in the relevant indian standards let us now look at some danger notices the owner of every installation of voltage exceeding 250 volts shall affix permanently in a conspicuous position a danger notice in hindi or english and the local language of the district with a sign of skull and bones of a design as per is 2551 on every motor generator transformer and other electrical plant and equipment together with apparatus used for controlling or regulating the same all supports of overhead lines of voltage exceeding 650 volts which can be easily climbed up on without the aid of ladder or special appliances luminous tube sign requiring supply x ray and similar high frequency installations of voltage exceeding 550 volts but not exceeding 33 kilovolts provided that where it is not possible to affix such notices on any generator motor transformer or other apparatus they shall be affixed as near as possible thereto or the word danger and the voltage of the apparatus concerned shall be permanently painted on it provided further that where the generator motor transformer or other apparatus is within an enclosure one notice affixed to the said enclosure shall be sufficient for the purposes of this regulation explanation for the purpose of clause b rails tubular poles wooden supports reinforced cement concrete poles without steps i sections and channels shall be deemed as supports which cannot be easily climbed upon now let's learn about the general safety requirements for handling of electric supply lines and apparatus before any conductor or apparatus is handled adequate precautions shall be taken by earthing or other suitable means to discharge electrically such conductor or apparatus and at any adjacent conductor or apparatus if there is danger there from and to prevent any conductor or apparatus from being accidentally or inadvertently electrically charged when persons are working thereon every person who is working on an electric supply line or apparatus or both shall be provided with tools and devices such as gloves rubber shoes safety belts ladders earthing devices helmets line testers hand lines and the like for protecting him from mechanical and electrical injury and such tools and devices shall always be maintained in sound and efficient working condition no person shall work on any live electric supply line or apparatus and no person shall assist such person on such work unless he is designated in that behalf and takes the safety precautions given in schedule 3 every telecommunication line on supports carrying a line of voltage exceeding 650 volt but not exceeding 33 kilovolt shall for the purpose of working thereon be deemed to be a line of voltage exceeding 650 volt all non current carrying metal parts of switch gear and control panels shall be properly earthed and insulating floors or mat conforming to is i5652 2006 of appropriate voltage level shall be provided in front of the panels for the safety of operating personnel all panels shall be painted with me description of its identification at front and at the rear now let's look at the general safety requirements for supply to vehicles and cranes every person owning a vehicle traveling crane or the like to which electricity is supplied from an external source shall ensure that it is efficiently controlled by a suitable switch 
enabling all voltage to be cut off in one operation and where such vehicle traveling crane or the like runs on metal rails the owner shall ensure that the rails are electrically continuous and earthed now let's learn about the general safety requirements for cables for portable or transportable apparatus flexible cables shall not be used for portable or transportable motors generators transformers rectifiers electric drills electric sprayers welding sets or any other portable or transportable apparatus unless they are heavily insulated and adequately protected from mechanical injury where the protection is by means of metallic covering the covering shall be in metallic connection with the frame of any such apparatus and earthed the cables shall be three core type and four core type for portable and transportable apparatus working on single phase and three phase supply respectively and the wire meant to be used for ground connection shall be easily identifiable now let's learn about the general safety requirements for cable protected by bituminous materials where the supplier or the owner has brought into use an electric supply line other than an overhead line which is not completely enclosed in a continuous metallic covering connected with earth and is insulated or protected in situ by composition or material of a bituminous character any pipe conduit or the like into which such electric supply line may have been drawn or placed shall unless other arrangements are approved by the electrical inspector in any particular case be effectively sealed at its point of entry into any street box so as to prevent any flow of gas to or from the street box and such electric supply line shall be periodically inspected and tested where accessible and the result of each such inspection and test shall be duly recorded by the supplier or the owner now let's understand the general safety requirements for street boxes street boxes shall not contain gas pipes and precautions shall be taken to prevent as far as reasonably possible any influx of water or gas where electric supply lines forming part of different systems pass through the same street box they shall be readily distinguishable from one another and all electric supply lines of voltage exceeding 650 volt at or in street boxes shall be adequately supported and protected so as to prevent risk of damage to or danger from adjacent electric supply lines next we will learn about the general safety requirements for cables protected by bituminous materials the supplier or the owner after the coming into force of these regulations shall not bring into use any further electric supply line as aforesaid which is insulated or protected in situ by any composition or material known to be liable to produce noxious or explosive gases on excessive heating all street boxes shall be regularly inspected for the purpose of detecting the presence of gas and if any influx or accumulation is discovered the owner shall give immediate notice to any authority or company who have gas mains in the neighborhood of the street box and in cases where a street box is large enough to admit the entrance of a person after the electric supply lines or apparatus therein have been placed in position ample provision shall be made to ensure that any gas which may be accident have obtained access to the box shall escape before a person is allowed to enter and for the prevention of danger from sparking the owners of all street boxes or pillars containing circuits or apparatus shall ensure that their covers and doors are kept closed and locked and are so provided that they can be opened only by means of a key or a special appliance now let's understand the general safety requirements for distinction of different circuits the owner of every generating station substation junction box or pillar in which there are any circuits or apparatus whether intended for operation at different voltages or at the same voltage shall ensure by means of indication of a permanent nature 
that the respective circuits are readily distinguishable from one another. Now, let's learn about the general safety requirements for distinction of the installations having more than one feed. The owner of every installation including substation, double pole structure, four pole structure or any other structure having more than one feed shall ensure by means of indication of permanent nature that the installation is readily distinguishable from other installations. Now, let's learn about the general safety requirements for accidental charging. The owners of all circuits and apparatus shall so arrange them that there shall be no danger of any part thereof becoming accidentally charged to any voltage beyond the limits of voltage for which they are intended. Where alternating current and direct current circuits are installed on the same box or support, they shall be so arranged and protected that they shall not come into contact with each other when live. Next, we will learn about the general safety requirements for provisions applicable to protective equipment. Fire buckets filled with clean dry sand and ready for immediate use for extinguishing fires in addition to fire extinguishers suitable for dealing with fires shall be conspicuously marked and kept in all generating stations, enclosed substations and switching stations in convenient location. The fire extinguishers shall be tested for satisfactory operation as per relevant Indian standard at least once a year and record of such tests shall be maintained. First aid boxes or cupboards conspicuously marked and equipped with such contents as the state government may specify shall be provided and maintained in every generating station, enclosed substation, enclosed switching station and in vehicles used for maintenance of lines so as to be readily accessible during all working hours and all such boxes and cupboards shall except in the case of unattended substations and switching stations be kept in charge of responsible persons who are trained in first aid treatment and one of such persons shall be available during working hours. 2. Or more gas masks shall be provided conspicuously and installed and maintained at accessible places in every generating station with capacity of 5 megawatt and above and enclosed substation with transformation capacity of 5 megavolt ampere and above for use in the event of fire provided that where more than one generator with capacity of 5 megawatt and above is installed in a power station each generator shall be provided with at least two separate gas masks in an accessible and conspicuous place provided further that adequate number of gas masks shall be provided by the owner at every generating station and enclosed substation with capacity less than 5 megawatt and 5 megavolt ampere respectively. Now, let's learn about the general safety requirements for display of instructions for resuscitation of persons suffering from electric shock. Instructions in English or Hindi and the local language of the district and where Hindi is the local language in English and Hindi for the resuscitation of persons suffering from electric shock shall be affixed by the owner in a conspicuous place in every generating station, enclosed substation, enclosed switching station, mines and in every factory as defined in clause M of section 2 of the Factory Act 1948, 63 of 1948 in which electricity is used and in such other premises where electricity is used as the electrical inspector may by notice in writing served on the owner direct. The owner of every generating station enclosed substation, enclosed switching station and every factory or other premises to which these regulations apply shall ensure that all designated persons employed by him are acquainted with and are competent to apply the instructions referred to in sub-regulation 1. In every manned generating station, substation or switching station of voltage exceeding 
650 volts. An artificial respirator shall be provided and kept in good working condition. Now, let's understand the general safety requirements for precautions to be adopted by consumers, owners, occupiers, electrical workmen and suppliers. No electrical installation work, including additions, alterations, repairs and adjustments to existing installations except such replacement of lamps, fans, fuses, switches, domestic appliances of voltage not exceeding 250 volt and fittings as in no way alters its capacity or character shall be carried out upon the premises of or on behalf of any consumer, supplier, owner or occupier for the purpose of supply to such consumer, supplier, owner or occupier except by an electrical contractor licensed in its behalf by the state government and under the direct supervision of a person holding a certificate of competency and by a person holding a permit issued or recognized by the state government. Now let's learn the general safety requirements for periodical inspection and testing of installations. Where an installation is already connected to the supply system of the supplier or trader, every such installation shall be periodically inspected and tested at intervals not exceeding 5 years, either by the electrical inspector or by the supplier as may be directed by the state government in this behalf or in the case of installations belonging to or under the control of the central government and in the case of installation in mines oil fields and railways by the central government. The periodical inspection and testing of installations of voltage above 650 volt belonging to the supplier shall also be carried out at intervals not exceeding 5 years by the electrical inspector.